Greetings to everyone. Welcome back to this informative and educational biology channel called Learn Bio with Janet. I'm teacher Janet who has taught biology for many years and marked thousands of exam papers of both excellent, moderate and also weak school students. Through that, I've gained a lot of insight into the techniques of answering exam questions, which I'll be sharing with you from time to time. By the way, I'm still young and not an ancient dinosaur. This video is the second video on this subtopic 3.1, Coordination and Response. And there'll be also a third video to finish up the lesson. Now, in this important video, you are going to have the opportunity to try out two HOTS questions, which are forecast essay questions for the exam. And we're going to look at the model answers later. You can even take out your written pen to mark your own essay. I'll also give you a super memory tip to help you remember the components that you need to write in your essay answer to help you get an A plus score for your essay. Now remember to share this video with your friends if you will find it helpful. And also click the bell button below to subscribe to this channel if you have not like and comment. Now let's just jump straight in into our lesson. The learning outcomes for this lesson are as follows. We must be able to state the main components and explain the pathways involved in detecting and responding to stimuli in the external environment with examples. So this is what we have here for video number two. The next learning outcome is state the main components and explain the pathways involved in detecting and responding to stimuli in the internal environment with examples. This will be discussed in video three, the third video. So for the second video, we are going to discuss stimuli in the external in environment and the pathway involved in detecting and responding to that stimuli. For example, sound and light are the stimuli in the external environment okay and for internal environment it can be like the changes in blood pressure that's the stimuli in the internal environment which we'll discuss in video number three let us look at this overview of the topic coordination and response. In the last video, we have already discussed the definition of the terms used in this topic, such as stimulus, receptor, integrating center, effector, and so on. And also we discussed the components of a coordinated system. That is, the stimulus is detected by a receptor, which produces a nerve impulse that is transmitted by the afferent neuron to the integrating center, which is the brain or spinal cord. Then the brain sends out an impulse, which is transmitted by the efferent neuron to the effector. The effector produces a response after that. So these are the seven components of the coordinating system that we have discussed. And it's useful to memorize it for the exam for essay and structured question and even for objective questions. But we have a memory tip here that we can use later on, okay, to remember all these components. So in this video, we are going to discuss examples of pathway of response to external stimuli, video two. And for internal stimuli, the pathway of response to internal stimuli will be discussed in video three. So for Pathway of response to external stimuli. We have two hot questions. Each of them is 10 marks that we need to discuss so that we can apply what you have learned to certain situations that are mentioned in the question. So this is the application part of the topic and it's very important for you to master this in case it comes up for the essay question or even for structured question or objective questions.
Before we discuss the questions, let's look at some types of receptors in the human body. In the sensory organ, the eyes, we have photoreceptors in the retina at the back of the eye that detect the stimulus of light. The word photo means related to light. So they are sensitive to this stimulus of light and they can detect the stimulus in the environment. In the ears, we have mechanoreceptors that detect the stimulus of sound. So mechanoreceptors are those receptors that can detect the mechanical stimuli, such as pressure or sound waves, vibration and touch. However, in the exam, as this term is not often used, we can just write receptors that are sensitive and able to detect the stimulus of sound. Okay, that's all in the ears. So all receptors are able to detect a particular stimulus each and they can produce impulses that are sent to the brain. Nose, the nose has chemoreceptors which are sensitive to chemicals and they can detect chemicals in the air. So that's how they create the stimulus of smell. Okay, that's how we have the stimulus of smell. The tongue has chemoreceptors that can detect chemicals in the food such as uh, sweet or sour food and that creates the stimulus of taste the sweet taste sour taste or salty taste okay comes from the chemicals in the food skin has mechanoreceptors too but they're different from the ones in the ears they are to detect the stimulus of pressure and touch so this is the receptor for pressure in the skin. It, has, it looks a bit different from the normal cells and this one's another receptor for smell. Now in the skin and brain we have thermoreceptors that can detect the stimulus of heat or cold. So they help to control the body temperature by being able to detect this stimuli. Thermo means heat, right? Now, aorta and carotid artery near the heart have groups of cells called baroreceptors. The word baro means pressure. Baroreceptors detect changes in the blood pressure. We'll be talking about this in the next video. Hypothalamus in the brain is a small region in the brain that contains osmoreceptors. These are cells that are sensitive to changes in the blood osmotic pressure. They can detect changes in the blood osmotic pressure, meaning the concentration of salts and water. Let us discuss the seven components of a coordinating system, which we have studied in the first video. Firstly, there's a change in the environment, and this is called the stimulus, which is detected by a receptor. For example, the receptor may be in a sensory organ, then the receptor is stimulated and it will produce a nerve impulse which is transmitted by the afferent neuron to the integrating center which is the brain or the spinal cord. Both these places or organs, the brain and spinal cord, are made up of a lot of interneurons, another type of neuron which transmits the impulses in the brain and spinal cord. So the brain will interpret the information coming in through the afferent neuron and it will send an impulse to the interneuron. So the impulse from the brain is transmitted by the interneurons and from the interneurons the impulse will be transmitted to the efferent neuron. Efferent neuron transmits the impulse to the effector which is the muscle, a muscle or a gland. And this effector will produce the response to the stimulus. So these seven components of the coordinating system must be memorized and also you must understand their roles in the coordinating system. The explanation here is what we should write in our essay answer if we are asked to discuss the main components and pathways involved in detecting and responding to a particular stimulus or a change in the environment. 
So it is uh, allocated 10 marks. The content here, therefore, is what we have discussed just now for seven components of the coordinating system. So I'll just read through this as we have already explained this in the previous slide. A. Receptors in a sensory organ first detect a stimulus and then the stimulus will trigger a nerve impulse to be produced by the receptors. Next, the afferent neuron, afferent neuron will transmit the nerve impulse to the integrating center, which is the brain or the spinal cord. Brain then interprets the information and sends out a nerve impulse which is transmitted from the interneuron to the efferent neuron. So notice three neurons are mentioned. A ferron neuron, which brings the impulse or transmits the impulse to the integrating center. The interneuron, which transmits the impulse within the integrating center, within the brain and spinal cord, and then out of it to the efferent neuron. And the efferent neuron has the function of transmitting nerve, the nerve impulse to the effector, which are the muscles or the glands. And lastly, the effector will cause a response to occur when it reacts. For example, the muscle can contract. So there's a reaction of the, the effector. So copy this framework for essay answer inside your book if you have not done so. It's the basic framework. Before we start discussing the question, I would like to share with you a super memory tip which I've invented to help answer the questions such as this. Explain the pathway involved in detecting and responding to a specific stimulus in the environment. Or explain the transmission of impulse for a certain action that is carried out. Right, so the memory tip is like this. Sri, A, B or R, B, E, E, M, R to represent all the 10 components that we are going to discuss. For example, SRI stands for Stimulus, Receptor and Impulse. Now SRI can be the name of a person or a title of respect or just think of uh, Tan SRI or Sri Lanka, right? So there's the word SRI there. And then AB or in we can also call it RB, which is the name of a person. A stands for afferent neuron, B is for brain, and I is for interneuron. So these three are related to the events that occur in the brain or spinal cord. Whereas the word three is for the location at the receptor. Huh? Second one is the brain, in the brain area, origin. And thirdly, EMR. The first E is for efferent neuron, which transmits the impulse to the effector. So this is at the effectors, the third part, at the effectors. So E is for efferent neuron and then effector. And then M is for muscle or gland. We must state whether it's a muscle or gland and what is the response that's carried out. Okay, does the muscle contract and so forth. So you can memorize this acronym very easily by repeating it. 20 to 30 times. So I told my students about this. Psychology, in psychology, we say that if you read it aloud for 20 to 30 times or write it down 20 to 30 times, it will go into your short-term memory. If you want to remember for longer periods of time, then you have to review it. Then it will go into your long-term memory. Okay. So RB or ASI here. If the brain is not involved but the spinal cord is involved, in the transmission of impulse, such as in reflex actions, which we will study later. Uh, then there's no brain involved, then you have to talk about the transmission of impulse to the spinal cord. So this acronym is very useful even later on when we talk about reflex actions. So try and memorize 3 RB -E -E Let me explain how it's used here. So the stimulus is detected by the receptor, which then produces an impulse. The impulse is transmitted via the afferent neuron by the afferent neuron to the brain. Now, in the brain, there are three eyes okay, that have happened. 
So here I wrote, only wrote I, but you can put I cube. Do what? I put the I cube there. So the brain will first interpret the information. Secondly, it will produce a nerve impulse. So information starts with I. Impulse is also I. And thirdly, this impulse is transmitted by the interneuron, another I. So I cube. Huh? Then the interneuron transmits the impulse to the efferent neuron. And the efferent neuron then transmits the impulse to the effector. So mention what the effector is. This is a muscle or gland. And the response. Mention what happens to the muscle. It contracts, for example. And then a certain action can be carried out. That's the response. Okay. So it's very easy. And uh, I suggest that you try and memorize this as soon as possible. And then also write it and paste it on the uh, on the wall or on the board somewhere for you to see. So after some days of reviewing, you should be very good in it. And so useful that when you come across these kind of questions related to transmission of impulse, you do not have to crack your head. You no, know, like what will, what do I write after the stimulus? I've forgotten. You no, know, have to think. Or did I leave out any items? Any components that I should write? So in times of exams, uh, we don't have. That much time to go and think. Okay, so it's easier if we have this in mind and we just smoothly apply it and use it to get full marks for the essay answer. Let's look at the question that was given in the first video. It is a forecast HOTS essay question for the exam. The question is like this. Lena hears the sound of the water boiling in the kettle. She turns off the gas stove. Explain the pathway involved in detecting and responding to the stimulus. 10 marks. Firstly, we must read the question a few times in the technique of answering. And then underline the keywords like sound of water boiling in the kettle, turns off the gas stove, pathway for detecting the stimulus and then responding to the stimulus. Then, after that, we can apply this acronym SRI ABI CUBE, uh, e -E -M -R, to our answer. So right now, you can take out a pen and paper. If you have not planned your answer from the last video, you can take out a pen and paper and start to think of the various components that are represented by these acronyms and then apply it to this particular situation to determine the stimulus in this situation, the receptor and the control center and so forth. You can also screenshot the question here or pause the video before we go on to look at the answer. So I will stop for a little while here, I will close off and then uh, you can pause the video and try to get the answer ready. Now, apart from using this acronym, remember the framework that we have written down earlier. You can use that as a guideline too, to write your essay answer. And you should have 10 points, 10 different points. I hope you have written some points to answer the essay question just now. And if you're still not sure, maybe we can discuss what's happening in the action that is taken by Lina, the response. And after that, it should be quite clear as to how to write the essay answer. So this is the pathway of response to an external stimulus. And let's discuss what happens in the situation of Lina. So Lina, here's the sound of the water boiling in the kettle. What is the stimulus here? Yes, the stimulus is the sound of the water boiling in the kettle. Please do not say that the stimulus is the water boiling in the kettle. Wrong. Stimulus is either the sound, the light, or the heat, for example, and other stimuli. Right, so now we know the stimulus, and this stimulus is detected by a receptor, the R, uh, in 3 R B E E M R. So what is the R, the receptor? The receptor is the receptor that is sensitive to the sound. And it is found in the 
in the ear, the sensory organ called the ear. So we can say receptors in the ear that's, that are sensitive uh, to sound detect the stimulus of sound of water boiling in the kettle. Okay, so that's the first statement. Now continue. Next, the receptor will produce an impulse that is transmitted by what neuron? Yes, a ferron neuron to the brain. Now which part of the brain is involved? Since the response, the final response is a voluntary action that can be controlled by the conscious will, we can control when we want to switch off the gas or not. Therefore, it is controlled by the cerebrum of the brain. This part of the brain that looks like a big mushroom. This controls, this part controls all the voluntary actions that can be controlled by the conscious will. Okay, so the impulse is transmitted by the afferent neuron to the cerebrum of the brain. Then remember, after the B, RB, eh, you have I. After B is I, I cube, right? So the brain will interpret the information. After that, it will produce an impulse, the second I, which is sent to the interneuron, the third I. Interneuron will transmit the impulse to the efferent neuron here. Okay, this one is representing efferent neuron. And in the cerebrum, the brain, you have the interneuron. So impulse is transmitted by efferent neuron to the effectors, which are the skeletal muscles of the body. Thus, they will contract and the response is the hand turns off the gas. Okay? Right, so now let us look at the answer. And if you have written the answer, you can mark it with your written pen. Let us look at the answer that can be written in the form of the essay. How do we get 10 marks from this question? Firstly, what in the ear detect the stimulus? Yes, it's the receptor. Okay, so receptors in the ear detect the stimulus of what? Sound of water boiling. The receptors then produce a nerve impulse. So here we have S for Sri, eh? S, R, I. Okay, next. What will transmit the nerve impulse? A ferron neuron, the A. To the B for brain, is it to the brain? Yes. The cerebrum in the brain, because this is a voluntary action. It's controlled by the cerebrum in the brain. Next, the brain does what to the information? The eye here interprets the information. It then sends out a nerve impulse, the second eye, which is transmitted by what neuron? Interneuron. To the next one, the E is efferent neurons. Efferent neuron then transmits the impulse to the effector, the second E. And that is the M. M stands for what? Muscle. So which muscle is it? It's the skeletal muscles of the arm and the hand that move the bones okay and uh, the muscle what does it do it will contract and produce the response r is for response that is you must mention what's the rest what's the response lina switches off the gas so you can see from the allocation of marks that we have got more than 10 marks actually and this is how we can use our acronym effectively to help us get the 10 marks. Here is a second question for you to practice and use the acronym and write the essay answer. Exam Hot's question number two, which is also a forecast question. Jack sees a ball in the school field. He kicks the ball into the goal. Explain the pathway involved in detecting and responding to the stimulus, 10 marks, or explain the transmission of impulse involving his action, 10 marks. For both questions, the answers are the same. So take a moment to think about the answer, apply the acronym 3RB cube EMR. 
and try and write the answer down on a piece of paper. You can pause this video to read the question again. You have to determine the stimulus, receptor and so forth. Right? So write it out as a full essay answer. And we will look at the answer after this. Now let's look at the answer. You can take a take out your red ink pen to mark your answer if you have written an answer. So in this question, Jack sees a ball in the school field, he kicks the ball into the goal, and you're asked to explain the pathway involved in detecting and responding to the stimulus. 10 marks. So before we start, let's revise our acronym very quickly again. S is for stimulus, R is for receptor, I is for impulse transmitted through the A, afferent neuron, to the B, brain, and brain will I interpret the information. The second I is what? Produce an impulse. The brain will produce an impulse and uh, it will be transmitted by what neuron? The third eye, interneuron. To the E for what? Efferent neuron. And from efferent neuron to the second E is what? Effector, which is the M for muscle or gland. And the muscle or gland will then produce the R for response. Okay? So in fact, this part you can also remember EMR, electromagnetic radiation. Just add an extra E here. And some people, they can sing it in the form of a song like London Bridge is Falling Down. Okay, let me try to sing to you huh? in case you want to remember it and you can't remember it. All right. So if you sing it according to London Bridge is Falling Down, it goes something like that. 3 R B E E M R E M R E M R 3 R B E E M R Transmits Impulse. Something like that. Okay, you can sing in the bathroom. Where nobody will hear what you're singing okay or just sing it anywhere now so let's start to discuss the answer first the s is the stimulus right so what is the stimulus in this case jack sees a ball in the school field so the stimulus is the light from the ball in the field not the ball huh? don't say the stimulus is the ball it's the stimulus that the light is the stimulus and the light is coming from the ball. Right. So the receptors are called photoreceptors. This is quite widely accepted, which are, if you don't put photoreceptor, you can put receptors that are sensitive to light. Okay. In the eye, detect the stimulus of light from the ball in the field. Next, they will produce a nerve impulse. One mark here and one mark for stimulus. And the, if a ferron neuron will transmit the nerve impulse to the control center that is the cerebrum of the brain again because this is a voluntary action kicking the ball is a voluntary action so it is controlled by the cerebrum next the brain will interpret the information and then send out a nerve impulse which is transmitted by interneurons to the efferent neuron the three eyes are here iq uh, interpret impulse and interneurons D, the efferent neuron transmits the nerve impulse to the effector. I mentioned what it is, the skeletal muscles of the legs. So mentioning the effector, what it is, can get you one mark. And in fact, if you mention efferent neuron transmits the impulse from interneurons to the effector, you may get another mark. Lastly, the muscles will contract and then it will produce a response. And that is Jack kicks the ball into the goal. One mark for contract. One mark for the response, kicking the ball into the goal. So there we have it. We have discussed two questions using this acronym, which is very useful for many of the questions on transmission of impulses. So in the next video, we'll discuss one more example where the stimulus is not from the external environment outside the body, but is from inside the body, internal stimuli. So stay tuned for the next video to complete this topic, subtopic. Thank you. And if you have learned something from it, you can share it with your friend. So like, comment and subscribe.
if you have not done so. Goodbye for now and stay safe. Keep calm and study.